Today on About the Music, I'm highlighting a man who had the 90s in a chokehold. He made every girl fall in love and made every guy want those light brown eyes. This episode is all about Devante Swing. I have fun with this one, guys, because Devante had his hands in so much music. This episode took me so deep in nostalgia land. Literally, this was a fun one. Let's go. The producer, singer, songwriter Devante Swing was born Donald Earl DeGroote Jr. And yes, that's a bit of knowledge for all of the Devantes out there who were actually named after Donald. <laughs> Devante was born on September 29th in Hampton, Virginia. He would introduce the world to the likes of Missy Elliott, Timbaland, Static Major, Jodeci, and the group Playa. Many of the artists who were a part of his swing mob went on to change the sound of R&B. Yet, he doesn't consider himself among the greats like Quincy Jones, Dr. Dre, and Barry Gordy. And that's unbelievable to me because his impact on R&B and just music in general is undeniable. Devante had a sound that is still iconic and recognizable today, but before he would be known as one of the best music producers the world has seen, he was just a 16 year old kid trying to get work at Paisley Park. Devante said he was at Paisley Park begging for a job, trying to convince people to listen to his tape. Obviously, that didn't work out for him, but it served as a catalyst because he went back to his hometown and began working on music that would later become Jodeci's demo. <laughs> Gotta love on Video Soul. Is, uh, who wrote the song? Well, yeah, Devante. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you write most of the stuff on the album? The two of you or all of you? Yeah, right? uh, Devante wrote most of the stuff mm -hmm. on the album. Because like, most of the stuff that was like that we did, was he had it together before the group got together. Oh, really? So a lot of stuff on the album is old. I mean, back in the day, old. It was back in the day for y'all. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear this. Like three years. Yeah, three, three years. Okay. Yeah, almost three years. And uh, and was, so we got together one night. We like put a lot of time on the tape. Make a long story short. And uh, we had like uh, three hundred dollars. We drove up to New York. Mm -hmm. and just one night, you know, I was spending a moment and drove to New York. Got lost for twelve hours. We never been there, you know. And <laughs> found a hotel like which was one hundred seventy five, hundred thirty five dollars a night. So we had, didn't have any money left. So. We had a little bit of money, paid it. Next one got out, went to MCA, got signed like the next. You're kidding. Yeah, so I there for the about next that. morning? That's scary, morning. right? The 29 song, three tape demo was so polished, Andre Harrell asked Jodeci to perform in person just to make sure there was no studio witchery going on. They performed Come and Talk to Me and I'm Still Waiting, both hits from their first album, Forever My Lady. Devante and Albie Shore wrote and produced the Forever My Lady album. So he actually came on the scene with a great ear for good music and a very strong pen. Like he came, he entered the industry with this talent. He's just gifted. Forever My Lady went three times platinum and peaked at number one at the number one position for top R&B hip hop albums. Jodeci's first album would go on to win Billboard Awards for Top R&B Album, Top R&B Song, and Top R&B and Hip Hop Artist of the Year. Now that's not bad for an album that is mostly your demo. Imagine your demo winning awards. It's incredible. His talent, Devontae's talent is undeniable. Y'all know this. Dog at me. How about this? <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright, y'all mess on song though. Let me give you something else. <laughs> While Forever My Lady gave us a taste of Jodeci and Devante's talents, Diary of a Mad Band solidified them as icons. This album was written and produced by Devante and is arguably a perfect R&B album. But he also took part in mixing this album. So, Devante wrote the album, produced the album, mixed the album, and performed the album. Okay? That's, yes, he's a musical genius. Whenever you want it in the evening, whenever you need it, when the night falls, you know that I got it. So, lady, just call me. You know that I'll do it. In the morning, whenever you want it. In the evening. Go back. You gotta watch that riff. You can't go on? Yeah. Want it. I need it. Right. Need it. Right. Want it. Want it. In the morning, whenever you want it, in the evening, whenever you need it, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, need it, that was it, so lady, just call me, you know that I'll do it. Right. Y'all, I'm giving a sing my notes. I know people waiting to see because they never saw me sing. Y'all gotta feel me from the man. <laughs> yo, yo, Dr. Charles wrote the text. Wrote, <laughs> wrote the tape. Wrote the tape. Redman, Missy, and Timbaland would feature on Diary of a Mad Band. The other thing that was very special about this album was Jodeci's aesthetic, which changed drastically from the Forever My Lady album. The aesthetic, their aesthetic during this time would become the quintessential Jodeci look. No one else can do it like they did it. It is their look. Period. The world hadn't seen an R&B group with tats and leather outfits, and it's been said that Puff styled Jodeci, and if that's true, if he's responsible for the diary of a mad band Jodeci style, he definitely struck diamonds. Now there's a lot of stories about Devante being the Suge Knight of R&B, and Jodeci definitely wore the title of the bad boys of R&B, 
But let's just focus on the amount of talent Devante brought into the industry. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Devante's swing mob include Timbaland, Missy, Static Major, who would go on to help Aaliyah craft the best album of her career, Stevie J, Genuine, and several, several others. It's said that Devante would push his group of artists to produce their best work. This was back when artist development was a requirement. How long, you been in? Uh, How long does it take to put an album together? Somebody I think who, I think who is it? Who is it? Somebody out here and got a beeper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How long does it take you to put together an album? Uh, uh, Jodeci can do an album in a week if we wanted to. We just, you know. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. We did our last album in two weeks. Two weeks. We constantly like, you know, writing songs every day. Just, well, we, it's not like we just take a break and say, okay, we're going to take a month off. We, every day is the same thing. You know, we might go play basketball for two hours, but then the rest of the day is music, music, music. Might go to movies late at night, then music, music, music. Really? Five, six o'clock in the morning, get up at like 12, music, basketball. Go see. Timbaland and Missy would go on to change the soundscape of R&B, creating work that still sounds fresh and intriguing to this day. Devante also had uh, a unique sound. His work had a very unique sound. You could hear it in Usher's Can You Get With It, which was written and produced by Devante. You can hear that unique sound in Tupac's No More Pain, which was produced by Devante. Hey Devante, the girl you know gonna sew up every bitch in the country. Me and you, up in the same motherfucking room, on the same level. <laughs> that sound is front and center on H-Town's part-time lover as well. And we can't miss Devante's fingerprints all over Montel Jordan's What's On Tonight. And Christopher Williams' All I See. The list of songs written and or produced by Devante is extensive. He's worked with everyone from Al Green to R. Kelly. And he was a major contributor to the shift from Teddy Riley's New Jack Swing era. So what is he up to now? Jodeci released their fourth album, studio album, um, The Past, The Present, The Future in 2015. Devante wrote and produced all of the songs on that album, and the group is currently undertaking their first Vegas residency. He's not working with any artists at the moment that I'm aware of, and he stayed largely out of the public's eye. Devante, rumor has it, he went through a lot during his time in the industry, but he accomplished so much. So, Although he's not currently working with any artist, he really doesn't have to write or produce another song. He had such an amazing run that if he never wrote another song, we'd have enough of his work to get us by. I do wish he would write a book because can you imagine the stories he carries with him? And he doesn't give any interviews at all. Like he, you don't even hear his voice anymore. Um... I mean, unless he's performing, of course. It was Casey and his, you know, his gospel group, and it was me and Dalvin, and we was in my dad's group. And then we had our own band, and everybody always told us about, you know, Casey and Jules, where y'all to hook up. So one day I said, well, let me go meet them. I met them, and I moved in with them, but we still wasn't a group. Like, for a whole year, I just lived with them. And I came to Georgia one day and said, yo, I'm going to start a group. Why don't you, you know, get down? So I wrote a song for my girlfriend, Georgia, we got down. And gospel, we was considered the bad boys of gospel. 
All of us. I don't know the switch. I don't know how that came about. We just started writing songs for girls around the neighborhood. And it just came there. So I just make music, you know what I'm saying? All right. I'm not trying to be a bad boy. I'm not trying to be out here, but that's what you want to call me. You know, they call us rebels because we, we always go against the grain. I think people should say, you know, I think people get wrapped up into the music so much that they want to actually live it out and whatever. If you're a hard rap group and you talk about, you know, um, killing or whatever, and you get wrapped up into that, and, you know, I, first of all, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have a rap group on my label talking about that, promoting violence, promoting, you know, I'm not, I'm not into that at all. Uh, you know, I, I don't think if they're going to do it, they shouldn't get caught up into it. And I don't think they should, you know, when, when trouble comes, I don't think they should act like they're not concerned about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they should take it. Like, I see, like, a lot of them on television after they get locked up or after whatever, and they act like they don't care. You know, I know that's just a role. I know they care. You know, they shouldn't, you know, go to the public with that. It's just fun. I like Snoop and Tupac. You know, his last song, Keep Your Head Up, was positive to me. I don't know what happened, but, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know. I, I don't know. I, like, I listen to all of them, you know. But some of the industry stories that he would have, I mean, ugh, can you just imagine? Anyway, many have tried to replicate Jodeci's style and sound. 112's first album worked really hard to give us Jodeci. Drew Hill has tried to pick up where Jodeci left off, but all of them lacked Devante's production and pen. You just cannot be Jodeci without Devante. So what's your favorite Devante project? I know a lot of people love, love, love No More Pain by Tupac. And yes, that's up there. That's that song is a classic. The the beat on that track. Ooh, yeah, that's up there. But could you even name just one? Because as I was going through the music for just preparing for this video, listening to some of the music that he has created, the list is so extensive. And as I was playing through the songs, I'm like, oh, yes, this is fire. Oh, this one. This is perfect. Oh, I forgot about this one. It's just so much there. You could create an entire Devante swing playlist. You could and you could just play it from top to bottom and just just press play and just let it roll so me personally i don't think that i could name just one but if you can tell me in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video sing a sweet love song to that like button and i'll see you on the next one